welcome to another Storytime Challenge from Blue Monday Review. I'm your Editor-in-Chief, Amanda Hamilton. It is August. Uh, technically, it'll probably be released in September, as usual. But um, we are. this is the Storytime Challenge for August. We are ramping up for the next issue, which should be released mid to late September. Just got done with our world-building workshop with Mark Shank from Scurvyville and Sarah Kincaid with uh, her book, Green Lady. That went amazingly. Thank you, Prosperos, for hosting us on that. Um, we had a lot of fun, a lot of, you know, really great discussion on that. So that's definitely something we'll probably look into doing at some point in the future. Um, like I said, we're ramping up for the, the new issues, so look for more updates on that. And um, other than that, we're just kind of trucking. Our August Storytime Challenge winner is Deborah L. David. Deborah grew up in Reno, Nevada. Uh, she received her MA in English from Penn State and taught college composition before becoming a technical writer. Uh, her poetry has been featured in Star Line, that star asterisk line, and Poetry Magazine, and she has poems pending publication in many other venues. Uh, a short story of hers will be appear in IGMS later this year, and she has three novels published at Kindle, The Saga of Edda Earth. Edda, E-D-D-A, dash, Earth. She currently lives in Houston, Texas with her husband and son. Uh, you can check out her stuff at www.edda-n-earth.com and uh, also at facebook.com slash earth. So without further ado, here is Deborah David reading her story, Storm Miners. Storm Miners by Deborah L. David. Silver sails above us, full-bellied with the sun, propellant tanks below them rattling in the wind. Our skimmer cradle below sways nonstop. You learn to step in time or take your Dramamine. No dreamers here, roughnecks all on the Nimbus Lee. The captain's owned her ten long years, a veteran he. Twenty souls for crew, and the cook's our newest man. Just a week aboard, his eyes still look for windows that aren't there. The rest of us? We scan the screen, strain for the sound of alarm sent by the local weather array, or worse, the rending sound of sails tearing away. The storms of Saturn can stir up fierce and sudden. A swirl of khaki clouds below, pure ammonia ice. As our steady captain navigates the bands, a paler bank moves to enshroud us, and the hydrogen winds begin to shriek. At twice the speed of sound, the storm catches us, and the hull begins to creak. The cook buckles in, a prayer upon his lips. The rest of us keep moving. We reef the solar sails, but one rips anyway, a blip upon the radar screen falling endlessly. Engines engage and churn, we break the storm's wall. Lightning flashes across a horizon that could hold the earth in its arms, but isn't so tender. No deuterium or H3 to collect today, but a dangerous bonanza. We hear our prize rattle against the hull and places piercing through the armor. We get into our suits, but know that if our names are called, those suits will do us no good at all. We'd follow our sail into atmospheric depths, and oxygen would just give us time to be crushed to death. If the ship founders... We all know to open our masks and just let go. Amid the swirling chaos and the groans of tortured steel, we man the nets and scoops like fishermen of old. Some, the storm strips away, and we watch our harvest fall, and wonder if a leviathan lurks to snap it up in the clouds below. But some scoops we haul back in, heavy with our fortune. The captain aims for the eye, and then sets a course for atmospheric breach. But the planet snarls its revenge, and one last buffet sends our ship into a spin. The captain's thrown from the helm to a ball cut. The mate crawls to the controls to find us clear sky. Back in the black, above the planet's frozen rings, we take in the butcher's bill. Three good men died that day, the captain, the cook, and the engineer's mate. And for what but diamond rain, born of lightning in Saturn's deadly skies? Full half our hall were tiny stones, black bullets of frozen rain. The other half were rainbow shards without contaminant or flaw. The dead man's share we set aside for the wives they'd left behind, and every stone that was their lot held a carnelian hue. Blood diamonds these, a ransom paid by a planet for lost husbands' lives. For the rest, half of each share was a taxman's due. Another third used to repair the Nimbus Lee. Some crewmen, sobered by their recent brush with death, vowed that this was their last venture, that their luck was spent. Yet of the fraction of our fortune that remained, most found its way to other pockets and ports from Earth to Galatea, 
for every man aboard that ship had a vice or two, though most of us called it stress relief. Whether it was beer, wine, and liquor, poker, baccarat, and pie gow, or whores in every shape and size, each took a toll on the budget, it's true. And so, before the earth had passed more than three degrees around the sun, every man of us had returned to Saturn's skies. Thank you, Deborah. Uh, that's about it. We've got a little news thing on the horizon, maybe a big news thing on the horizon um, next month. Uh, if you want to look out for that, then do. It's kind of bad news, but there is a silver, silver lining. But I'll cover that then. Don't you worry about that. Don't you worry your heads. Thank you so much for watching Storytime Challenge. I've been your host, Amanda Hamilton. Uh, have a great day.